sorry, this, this is uh, So hello everyone, this year Fudan TSI presents you with Revolution, an in vivo system for sequence-specific continuous mutagenesis. Now let me introduce our project to you through a simple story. Once upon a time, there was an unhappy E. coli. It is not satisfied with the plasmid it was carrying. How I would like to have another plasmid, the E. coli spoke to itself with a continuously evolving version of my beloved target. Unfortunately, the E. coli couldn't get its desired target through plasmid exchange, as no such version existed. The E. coli was not dismayed, as it knew of the way to fulfill its dream, by defeating the angry dragon of mutagenesis. The dragon has been defeated by others before. It learned from previous battles and became more cunning than ever. But it was not invincible. There are weaknesses that E. coli has known. In vitro methods like Aeropron PCR have to conduct mutagenesis and selection separately, which is time-consuming and laborious. In vivo methods like phage-assisted continuous evolution mutates the whole genome and lack target specificity. How am I going to defeat the angry dragon who is so strong? The E. coli thought and thought. Then, with a spark of mind, with a strengthened shield and a sword, I could defend myself and defeat the dragon. The Ecoli quickly came up with this design. The sword would be reverse transcriptase, while the shield would be recombinase. The target sequence would be transcribed into mRNA and then be reverse transcribed into cDNA. In this process, the target would be randomly mutated by the error prone nature of the reverse transcriptase. Through the recombination activity of Cree, the mutated cDNA would be reinserted to its original site. Then the mutated target would be transcribed again and go through the mutation cycle iteratively. Now the brave E. coli first sharpened its sword. We chose monoline marine leukemia virus re reverse transcriptase for the following five reasons. It is a well-characterized part and functions as a monomer. It has high processivity and can process long-length RNA and is orthogonal to prokaryotic hosts. Also, it has low primer specificity, which enables the self-tailoring of primers. To further enhance its error-prone ability, a mutation was made. We contacted Professor Alper with our design. He mentioned to us the necessity of the capsid protein for promoting the reverse transcription efficiency. On his guidance, the design is revised from only expressing reverse transcriptase to expressing the GAGPO polyprotein. The GAGPO can be split into three proteins, the viral capsid, protease, and the reverse transcriptase. The protease would process and splice the polyprotein, allowing the capsid and RT to function on their own. The RT expression is then confirmed by SDS page. Induced by IPTG, the GAPO polyprotein would be expressed and split into three fragments within the cell, and both the wild type and the mutated version are tested by us. The three bands, each indicating RT, capsid, and protease, can be seen on the gel. The target is flanked by sequences necessary for the completion of reverse transcriptase. The primer binding site would anneal with tRNA primer and initiate minus strand synthesis. The polypurin tract would initiate plus strand synthesis, and the U5 region would facilitate strand transfer. We confirmed that the target can be successfully transcribed and translated. We tested it by transforming a plasmid containing chlorophenical resistance gene. The addition of flanking sequences does not affect its function, as we can see that cell colonies can still grow on plates containing the chlorophenical antibiotic. The L158X mutant is one of the seven nonsense mutants designed on the CHL gene. The mutation will truncate the protein and result in its loss of function. And we can see that cells carrying this plasmid cannot grow on plates containing the CHL antibiotic. 
Then, a tRNA primer is needed for the initiation of minor strand synthesis. Th this primer also enables the specificity of our reverse transcription, as it only recognizes the target sequence which carries the primer binding site. This allowed our system to only mutate the target sequence, but not any other. <coughs> so here is the diagram showing the reverse transcription process. Functioning together, this part will make up our reverse transcription module and bring mutations to the target sequence. We simulated the reverse transcription process in modeling, and we can see that the cDNA will be produced and quickly reach its steady state concentration within the presence of RT. Now, the E. coli has equipped itself with the sharpened sword. All it needed now is the solid shield. Well, the E. coli went on to strengthen its shield against the angry dragon. Cree recombinance is chosen for the completion of recombin recombination derived from the P1 bacterial phage the recombinant is also orthogonal to most of the prokaryotic systems, and it performs different functions simply by the different directions and the positions of the lock sites. The lock sites are positioned at the farthest end of the target sequence in the same direction. The lock sites on the plasmid and the cDNA would be paired by the Cree recombinant and form holiday junction. In this way, Fragment exchange would be completed, and the mutated cDNA would replace the original sequence and take its place on the plasmid. In our original design, we used two same LOX P sites on both ends of the target sequence, but after consulting Professor Wang, whose work focused on gene editing, we realized the problem. The same LOX P sites would be excised by Cree at a much higher efficiency than the recombination process. Therefore, the most likely outcome of the original system would be plasmids without any target sequence. To solve this problem, we changed the design into incompatible lock sites. For example, the lock sites 1 and 2 here would only pair respectively with the same ones, but not with each other. In this way, the excision activity would be eliminated. This new design is also supported by our modeling result. Um, there will be no plasmid containing recombined target if the same lock speed sites are used, while the recombined product would occur when it comes to incompatible lock sites. To find the best performing pairs of lock sites, we co-transformed the target plasmid with pre recombinants then we determined the excision efficiency of all pairs by PCR amplification. Three LOX sites reported to be incompatible with LOX P are tested. They are LOX 511, LOX 2272, and LOX 5171. From the result, we can see that LOX 5171 and LOX 2272 performs well, with full length target and no excision event. And we chose LOX 5171 for further experiments. During our interaction with Professor Lin, who works on protein biology, he raised the question, what if Cree is in, a, is in the system after induction is halted? To avoid undesired recombination, he suggested that we attach degradation tags to Cree, which would enable its uh, rapid disappearance in the system upon the removal of the inducer. This design also meets our need of reducing Cree leakage and keeping it in the system only when we want. We tested a series of degradation tags, and the effect of each tag on steady-state expression level is, tags, is tested by attaching the tags to EGFP and measuring its fluorescence. Our model offered guidance on the tag selection. The recombination level of the target sequence on different inducer concentration and different degradation rate is calculated. From the output, we can see that Moderate degradation rate and inducer level generates the highest recomb recombination efficiency, and the WVLAA tag best suited our demand. Now, our E. coli has obtained both the sharpened sword and, and strengthened shield. With courage and confidence, the E. coli strode towards the angry dragon and declared its defeat. 
Our modeling successfully simulated the system and proved its function. It demonstrated that the amount of Cre and the cDNA within the cell should be maintained at a ratio of about 2 to 5. Which, uh, this means that Cre should be kept at a relatively low amount, which again proved the necessity of our degradation tag attachment. Under optimal expression level, um, we can see that recombined target would occur and the mutagenesis process would take place. What's more, the modeling result also demonstrated the mutation accumulation accompanying this bacterial growth. In our simulation, mutation would take place and accumulate as time flows and cell replicates, which proves for the continuous mutation of our system. Now, let me, hear, let me say this again. We hereby present to you the revolution system, which facilitates continuous mutagenesis of a specific sequence inside a cell. We have created a collection of parts for the self-tailoring of our mutagenesis system. The collection is composed of five sections, reverse transcriptase and its mutant, tRNA primer, a series of lock sites, degradation tags, and chill mutants. By using them, researchers could quantify the mutation rate of systems and customize its function according to their own working condition. In all, our part section provides a complete set for the assembly, test, optimization of continuous mutagenesis in different prokaryotic hosts. The mutagenesis system could be used to generate mutation libraries of individual proteins, whole pathways, and functional RNA sequences. The mutation library could be used for downstream selection in directed evolution, as well as other high-throughput research. What's more, the parts used in our system are orthogonal to most prokaryotes, and thus could be adapted to various hosts. This enables the coupling of mutagenesis and selection process, and covers the issue of mutagenesis in different organisms. <laughs> we designed a series of experiments to monitor the recovery of EGFP mutant. The fluorescence recovery could be monitored and quantified by plate reader and measurement kit distributed by IgM. The mutant is non-functional, while the recovered EGFP emits green fluorescence. The verification that this fluorescence recovery couples with mutation site recovery is conducted by site-specific PCR amplification. Specially designed primer only amplifies the wild type EGFP, but not its mutant. The above methods are easy, but still took time to perform. We also found ways enabling rapid examination of fluorescence recovery. Liquid culture could be examined under fluorescence microscopy. Cell clones carrying wild type EGFP emits green fluorescence, which can be easily detected by naked eye under ultraviolet light. This easy UV light detection inspired us hardware design. Our hardware the fluorescence tracker can track bacterial growth and fluorescence level of cell colonies on culture dishes. The result could be monitored remotely from your smartphone or PC through Team Viewer. We believe that this setup has application possibilities in a wide range of fields. tRNA Primer Designer is our software. It outputs self-tailored tRNA primer for the user's specific target sequence. Our software is very easy to use. First, the user should select the reverse transcriptase they are using. Then, input the target sequence and click Submit. The system will function automatically and output the designed tRNA primer, including both its clover leaf structure and the corresponding sequences. The designed tyranny primer could also be used in eukaryotic experiments. Our public engagement is focused around interaction. We designed a board game based on our system, distributed booklets on synthetic biology, 
published the video of PCR experiment and held lectures and workshops to kids and students. In doing so, we hope to bridge the distance between the biology research and the public, as well as enlightening them on the concepts of continuous evolution. In addition, we designed a guidebook by organizing previous projects' conducts. We hope to offer guidance on how, conduct, on how to conduct human practices for future teams. These are our team members. It is the hard work and dedication of each one of us that built our project brick by brick. We have collaborated actively with other teams in various ways, including the exchange of plasmids and ideas on experiment and modeling. We thank everyone that has contributed and helped with our project. Thank you for listening. regarding the first SDS gels you showed. Why you don't have a severe ban on the gel but a smear? Can you give me a brief explanation? Uh, so, uh, as, we need, uh, as we don't need a high purity of um, uh, the worst so we just test the wholesale proteins. Uh, so it's must, uh, it's my, my be uh, that. So uh, very good presentation and very nice work. So may I ask, uh, like, is you build up this kind of uh, integration system to you to cause the sequence mutation? Is this uh, mutation is a kind of uh, sequence specific or it can be broadly used to, to any sequence and uh, did you do any vari uh, variation to do that to approve that is very have a very broad application um, well we were do the uh, inspiration that uh, made us to do this project is because we want to like mutate only the 